<laughs> now it's 10.09, we'll be in order. Uh, I am Jared Dashoff, your presiding officer. This is Tim Illingworth, our deputy. To his right is Lisa Hertel, our timekeeper. And that is the time signal. Um, to my left is uh, Linda Denroff, our secretary. To her left is Don Eastlake, our parliamentarian. In the back is our videography crew, Lisa Hayes, our main videographer, and Kevin Stanley, her assistant. And roving about the room, um, who I didn't introduce yesterday, are our sergeants at arms, Mr. Shirt in the back, Colette Fazard up front, and Warren Buff over on my left. Um, a couple of procedural notes that we'll get through this morning, as we did yesterday. Please note your presence on the uh, sheets at the back. When you come up to the microphone, please speak into the microphone and state your name. And if your name is hard to spell or understand, please stop by the secretary and show her your badge so that she can get your name into the minutes. Our uh, videography uh, Wi-Fi has been graciously provided by SFSFC, and Wizards Tower has provided um, the ability to make high-res copies. And we thank Detcon 1 for our cart system, which is over on that side of the room. Yay! So since we didn't get to them yesterday, we are going to move into committee reports. But we have one special item of business, which is the Mark Protection Committee elections. Seeing as how the uh, nominations, the number of nominations are equal to the number of slots on the committee, I'm going to ask to suspend the rules and elect those who have been nominated. Is there any objection to that? <coughs> Seeing none, the members who were nominated yesterday, who are the members whose terms are expiring, Mr. Illingworth, Mr. Yallo and Mr. Stanley are hereby elected to the Mark Protection Committee. <laughs> and now, Mr. Illingworth, we have gotten to the nitpicking and fly specking committee. Would you like to give an oral report? What? I'm supposed to give it. It doesn't matter. Does it? Oh, you can give it. You want me to? Yeah, yep, you do it. Okay. That's gonna find it. You work ahead. I will. <laughs> Just arguing a bit over who should give the report. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll give it from the head table. It'll be very brief. Uh, the sure maybe the agenda shows what the job of the nitpicking and fly specking committee is to do, which is to compile rules and to uh, suggest improvements when they seem to be needed. The committee has been attempting to minimize the number of uh, nits and uh, fly specs that is brought before the body because of the press of other business for the past couple of years. However, we did note that the elimination of the regions for the uh, our protection committee in site selection means there's no longer a definition of North America in the Constitution, which is highly relevant to whether or not there is a NASFIC. We have therefore proposed item B27, defining North America, which is also in the agenda. And uh, perhaps when the swell of the business dies down, we'll have more nits and fly specs to bring before the body, since there are plenty of them. Are there any questions for the committee? Seeing none, we will reappoint us. You are reappointed. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we will move on to the Worldcon Runners Guide Editorial Committee. Mr. Wilmoth, do you want to give a report? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Mike Wilmoth, and I'm the chair of the uh, committee for Worldcon Runners Guide. As reported in your documents, uh, I found out late last year that there was a catastrophic failure with the conrunner.net uh, website uh, hosted by Bill Taylor, and I contacted him about the problem. He looked into it, uh, attempted to recover from backup. Uh, apparently the disaster was caused by a software upgrade by his web host provider, and uh, he was unable to recover from backup. Thankfully, I had, ironically, PDFs of uh, the site from a few years ago. And so a friend of mine in Virginia, Kat Yeager, has extracted the data, and I'm reloading more or less as, as I speak. Uh, should be done reloading the Worldcon Runner's Guide as of that date by the end of this month, 
and then the team will continue forward with making the updates and bringing it back up to speed to where it was, plus making further improvements. Are there any questions for the committee? Ms. Neal. Have you tried looking on the Wayback Machine? Uh, that's another thing I'm going to look into uh, as soon as Worldcon is over. <laughs> any other questions? Seeing none, thank you, Mr. Wilmoth. You are reappointed. Thank you. You are also reappointed. I was kidding. Mr. Olson, would you like to give any report for the? All right. Are there any questions for the long list committee? Seeing none, Dr. Rask, would you like to give the report of the YA Hugo committee? Thanks. Right, wait, give me oh. one second. I need to catch Mr. Up. Olson, you're reappointed. <laughs> okay. I'm caught up. Good morning, everyone. Okay, my name is Katie Rask, and I was the chair of the YA Award Committee for a second year. Um, you may remember me from last year. If you were here, I gave uh, the presentation for the, the committee's report, um, that the committee that was formed previous to address the issue of a YA Hugo Award. That committee gave an extensive report, uh, which is still published online, and that the, the majority consensus of that committee was that a YA Hugo Award does not, um, it's just not feasible based on the methodology of the Hugo Literature Awards, which are based on word count. So we um, addressed the issue of a Campbell-like award and asked that the committee be uh, reappointed for this year to address that. And so we did that. We Our focus for this year was on the feasibility of a Campbell-like award for young adults. And we presented you with um, a committee report that has multiple uh, sections. Um, our main um, point that we came up with at the end, essentially, is that a YA Hugo, or excuse me, a Hugo in general, addresses a work. A Campbell addresses a author. And potentially, a YA award would address age category or, or age, um, uh, yes, age, essentially. Right. I'm not going to go through the whole report because I think you guys can read that, but I will address a few uh, issues in particular. Um, the, the basics of um, what a YA award would look like if it were a Campbell-like award is in Exhibit 2. Um, this is uh, a series of points based on a comparison of the Campbell and the Hugo in general. Will the speaker yield for a question? I believe there's a... Oh, gosh, that is a very good question. Um, page, yes, page 40. So our exhibit one is actually just the comparison of the Hugo and the Campbell, um, specifically addressing things like logistics and how the award works, who sponsors it, who votes, so on and so forth. And so um, exhibit two, which is on page 40, uh, then discusses how a YA award would work. And um, so... Essentially, a YA award would be added to the Constitution. It would not be sponsored or would not need to be sponsored by anybody else because it would be um, a, a Worldcon sponsored award. Um, the business meeting would get to vote on the particulars. Each Worldcon and Hugo um, administration committee would be in charge of managing the award every year, just as they are with um, essentially the Campbell and the Hugo. Dual eligibility would be um, allowed because uh, much as it is with the Campbell and the Hugo, you can be nominated for both. Uh, a YA award uh, would then allow someone to be nominated for both. But of course, the author, if they so chose, could you know, remove their name or something like that. Now, we spent the year um, addressing a variety of issues, and actually several 